everybody. So what I wanted to do today was I wanted to make a series of videos about hash table and in particular collision resolution. But I thought it might be a good idea to do a very quick recap. So this very first video is going to be a recap of what we already know about hash tables. And then after we've done this, we will move on to actual collision resolution in uh, other videos. Feel free to skip this one if you still remember what hash tables were. Uh, but let's do a quick recap. So a hash table is uh, an implementation of the table abstract data type. And uh, remember that an abstract data type doesn't actually define how you're going to implement something. So when we first started tables, we said, well, we can do this as a sorted array uh, or you know, an unsorted array, and we looked at what the consequences are. So um, a table is really simply a collection of key value pairs, uh, which are also called records. Now, uh, nobody says that this key value pair has any sort of ordering to it. It's a collection. It could be like there's no specific thing that says, okay, the smallest key has to go at the beginning and the biggest key has to go at the end, or the first key you put in has to go at the beginning and the biggest key at the end. There's nothing, uh, or sorry, the, the latest key is at the end. Uh, there's nothing like that when you talk about tables. It's simply you have to store a whole bunch of these key value pairs. What we know about the things that we store is as follows. Keys are unique within a table. So there are no two records in the table that can have the same key. This is really, really important concept. Uh, very often this is mixed up with something that we talk about later in hash tables. So really important to know keys are completely unique. If you have, you cannot have two records with exactly the same key. Okay. Um, now, uh, what else do you have? Well, you have keys. Um, you also have, uh, so you have keys, you have values. Values are just the thing that goes with the key. So, so uh, you probably have seen this, like, for example, when you create JSON objects, right? So if you create a JSON object, you know that you have like a key and then a colon and then a value, right? Uh, so it, it's the same idea. You cannot have two keys that are exactly the same within a JSON object, uh, but you can have different values or, or the same value with, for two different keys, right? So uh, the keys are the thing that uniquely identifies the key value pair. That's the important part, okay? Now, what can you do with uh, a table data, uh, abstract data type? Well, you can do insert. Um, you take the key, you take the value, you put it into the record. Put pair, put key value pair into the table. Okay, that's a, that's a possibility. Uh, you can modify what is already there. Uh, update value for a uh, given key within the table. Okay, so uh, not update, let's call this modify. Modify a key. Okay, modify value for a given key within a table. Uh, this, of course, assumes that your key is already there. Now, uh, sometimes you can take these two and put it together into one. Uh, and in fact, that's what you do in the assignment. The, uh, these two functionalities, insertion and modify, are actually part of one function uh, on the assignment. Now, uh, we also have remove key. And what you do is you remove the key value pair for a given key. So you find the key value pair. You find for you look for a matching key. When you find the matching key, you remove the, the the entire record. Okay, and of course you also have search or find or whatever returns value given the key. So you look for the key value. You look for a certain key within the it, within the table, and you pass back whatever the value is. So that's sort of the the things that we do. Those are the the four main things, I guess these two could be considered, you know, one thing, but those are the, those are things that we want to be able to do with our table. Um, now, at, at, by the way, and this, this is actually not specific to hash tables. This is just tables in general. Those are the functionalities we want. So what makes a hash table unique is really how it implements those four functions. How does it actually make these four functions fast? And what it does is it makes use of something called a hash function. Now, a hash function is really a function that's uh, it's actually a very, very simple idea. 
it takes a key as its one and only argument, and it returns a hash value. Okay. Now, what do we know about this hash value? Um, well, it's an unsigned whole number. That's that's really all we really know about it. So, given any key, it's going to take that key and do some mathematics on it and turn it into a number. Now, the key might be numeric, okay? You can actually take a number and run a hash function for it, write a hash function for it uh, involving all kinds of stuff, okay? You can be given a text string, okay? So, so you know, uh, it could be like some, some character string. Uh, it could be some object. But whatever that thing is, it will transform whatever you give it into a number. Now, uh, there are different ways that this can be accomplished. Uh, we are not going to write any hash functions ourselves. Uh, we will use the one that comes with the C++ standard library. Um, that's pretty much it. So it's a function that, when given a key, will return a hash value. The most important thing about this hash value is that given the same key, it will return the same hash value every single time you call it. So it does, if you give it cat the first time, it'll give you some number. And the next time you give it cat, it will give you the exact same number and so on. So it's a consistent return value for a key. Now, uh, the other part uh, that is pretty important about this is that the runtime of this function is independent of the number of records in the table. So in other words, the only thing that dictates how fast this function runs is the, the size of is the, the key itself. It doesn't mean that if you if you have like 20,000 records in your table, 50,000 records in your table, it has no effect on the runtime of the hash function. So relative to the number of records in your table, the hash function is constant. This is really important. Okay? So in other words, O1 runtime relative to number of uh, records in a table. So it doesn't matter how many key value pairs we store, this function takes the same amount of time to run. Okay, this is actually a really important feature if you don't have this. Um, so for example, uh, suppose that you simply had a hash function that would store um, like when a key was inserted or something like that. And the first key was one, the second key was two, the third key was three or so on, right? Uh, then as the number of keys get bigger, the way that you would have to find which key, what the hash value is actually slows down. So, uh, because you would have a bigger search space, right? So that actually would be one where you can't do it that way because it wouldn't be constant relative to number of records because it would grow with as the number of records grow. So the hash function must be unique, completely separate from how many records are stored. This is actually pretty important. So it's a it's a function that simply says, okay, give me a hash, give me a key. I don't even care if you have anything in it. This is how I always make the calculations. That's it. <laughs> okay, so now, um, so a hash function gives you some sort of unsigned whole number. Now, uh, if we think about um, an unsigned int, uh, the range for that is between zero to four billion plus, right? Now, I don't know what the number is, but it's it's around there. Okay, uh, now. That's a lot of numbers. Four billion is a is a huge number. Okay, four billion is is so big. Well, it's a huge number, anyways. So, because it's such a big number, um, that it, it means that we generally do not have um, we don't generally have tables that store four billion things. Okay. We actually have tables that only store a portion of that, okay, a, a smaller portion of that. So 
it's it's too it's typically uh, way too big for our table, and this is only for unsigned integer. We're not even talking about some other data type that has more than thirty two bits. Okay, so um, the the way that and uh, hash functions, I believe, actually return bigger than that, but it doesn't matter. Uh, whatever our hash function returns, it is some big number. And this number is typically way bigger than our table size. So uh, what we do for our table, the way that hash tables are implemented, it's really just an array of records. Now, whether you do it as one array or two arrays where you have one array for the key and one array for the value and you just keep the two array parallel or if you put the key values into a record and then you put the record into an array, that's up to you. Okay, there, there's actually different ways that you can implement this idea. Okay, you don't have to do it one way. There's different implementations even of this. But the point is, is that you have some sort of array that stores your key value pairs. And you have to use that you use the hash function to index into that array. Now, the the hash value that is returned is usually way bigger than the than the capacity of your array. So it will be an out of range number. Like if I give you four billion, then that's usually something that's an index that is invalid. So what we do is we take the hash value. And we perform a modulus to capacity of array. Um, so what this will do is it will generate a number between 0. Uh, this, this produces something that we call a hash index, first of all. So a hash index is simply a value that we calculate, which is the hash value modulus the capacity of the array. Um, now, given this hash index, um, what do we do then? So we have a hash index. What are we going to do with this hash index? Well, the thing, the reason that we do a modulus right here is because a modulus operation on any any n results in a value that is between zero to uh, n minus one. So this in this in this particular case, it will be capacity. Uh, minus one. So that's that's what the hash index's value is. So this is sort of one of those features of a modulus operator. It always returns a value between zero and one less than whatever this number is, uh, assuming that this number is positive. Now, why is that a really useful idea? This idea is particularly useful because uh, this is uh, valid array indexes. Okay. So if I do the modulus, I guarantee that whatever I have for the hash index, it's going to be a valid index. I'm not going to be doing some. I'm not going to be accessing something that is out of range. Okay. So that is, that's pretty much how it works. So whenever we talk about doing any operation on the table, okay. So for example, if we wanted to insert something in, insert key value pair, what do we do? Well. What we would do is we would start by calculating the hash index, right? So you get hash value, which is equal to uh, hash function key. Then you calculate the hash index, which are which is two different numbers. Okay, so hash value is one number. Hash index is a different number, which is just the hash value mod cap, where cap is the array, the the size of the array. And then you can um, put the put it into our uh, array. Sub cap is or su sorry, sub hash index equal uh, equals to uh, our record of key value. Now I'm not doing this quite correctly, but it's that's the idea. You simply take the key value pair, you put it into your array, uh, and that's that's the basics. Okay. Calculate the hash index, take the key value pair, put it in. Now, this is very basic. It also means that there are things that can actually go wrong in this. Uh, but if nothing goes wrong, this is effectively all hash tables do. Calculate a hash index, 
take the heat, run it into the hash function, get a hash value, calculate a hash index, use the hash index to access a particular record within the array, done. Now, the, the, the good part about this is that if you take a look at this functionality, this is an O1 function. We already said that relative to the size of the table, uh, this function has to be O1. Then the modulus operator, well, that's, that's constant. There are two operators here. Uh, and then we do an assignment, we're done, right? So you take the record, you put it in, right? So it's, it's pretty straightforward, okay? And it's also really, really fast. So now what? What do we do now? Okay, great. Um, well, the problem with hash tables is not this idea. This idea is really simple, really fast. The problem is that we suffer from something, um, we suffer from something called collisions. Uh, and that is going to be, um, oh, actually, no, let's continue with this. Uh, so uh, when the problem here is that we have something called collisions. Now, what is a collision? A collision occurs when two different keys end up at the same hash index, okay? So collisions occur when two different keys end up at the same hash index. So if you recall what we said was what we said before the end of class was this. Usually um, the total number of possible keys is that number is usually bigger than the total number of possible hash values. So uh, more than the number of hash values that are available. Okay, so the num uh, so the total number of possible keys is bigger. Now it doesn't mean that every single key exists. So this is the number of possible keys, is not the total number of keys. Okay, so uh, for example, if you open up your driver's license or some other identification, okay. And what you will find is that the identifying number, like even our SIN number, right? Like our, our social insurance number, for example, has nine digits. Your driver's license has something like 14. Now, if you count how many different unique patterns of numbers and numbers and letters there are for the case of the driver's license, what you will find is that it's a lot of different permutations. Okay, that's so if I take every single possible number, every possible letter in every position, there's a lot of them. Okay. Um, so like social insurance number is really easy. Like there's nine digits, right? And if you take a look at, and if you think about the population of Canada, we do not have 900 million people. A, another simpler one, your student number has nine digits. We do not have 999 million Seneca students past present okay like it's not it's not there's there's not that many that there's not that many students yet okay so no matter which way we cut it um the total number of possible keys okay every single different set of values can be a key right every single uh the total number of possible keys is typically significantly higher than the number of hash values you can have and that number is, at, at, and those are simple examples, right? So you have lots of possible keys um, and the hash values are typically, there's typically less, like those are, you know, like it depends on the, the number, right? Okay, so now, even if your hash values are as big as your keys though, the number of hash values is typically bigger than the number of hash indexes, okay? So what it means is that we're taking a lot of possibilities, squeezing it down, and then squeezing it down some more. And so what it means is that um, the pigeonhole principle will apply. And that means, and the pigeonhole principle is, imagine you have nine letters at eight mailboxes, and you have to try to put all nine letters into one of these mailboxes. What you can guarantee for sure to say is that at least one mailbox has two letters. Now, you don't know which mailbox, and you don't know uh, whether they'll all end up at the same box, you cannot guarantee that 
any one mailbox will not be empty, but you can guarantee for certain that at least one mailbox has two letters. So same problem here, because we're squeezing a big number into a small number, what we end up with is we um, end up with a significantly, um, a significantly smaller, uh, a smaller number at the end. And what that means is that collisions are going to occur. We have a possibility that two different keys will end up at the same hash index at the very end. Okay, whether it's because two keys got the same hash value, or even if they all had this, uh, even if they all had different hash values, let's say that we were able to do that. In order to then squeeze it into the hash indexes, that usually will squeeze it down to a point where you will have collision. Okay, so most important thing about collisions, collisions are unavoidable. You can't avoid them. Okay, not unless the number of keys uh, is uh, less than or equal to the number of hash indexes. And there is a simple mapping between keys and indexes. So that's that usually requires that you know something about the keys in order for you to do something like that. And usually really not something that you could really avoid. So you don't try to, okay? Uh, because they're generally unavoidable, certainly not for a general hash function. You, those that's, This is pretty much impossible. So collisions are unavoidable. And now um, what you're doing, what you have to do is you have to find a way to handle it, which will be the topic of the next few videos. Okay, thank you.